Hey everybody, I'm Grim from Star Jump. Thanks for uh, tuning in. So this is another episode of my sort of uh, behind the scenes, making the scene videos. Uh, the goal here is to just sort of peel back some of the onion layers on the project I'm working on and give uh, all you fans out there of what I do a little bit of uh, insight into my techniques, uh, some of my tricks and stuff. I get a lot of um, messages from people that are curious how um, I create the cinematics, how I do certain ships, especially ships that are unreleased, um, and just, you know, want to talk to me about the process. So that's what this is kind of about, is to kind of, you know, a little bit of a peek behind the curtain, so to speak, to, to see how that is done. Um, and tonight we got a couple of cool ships we're going to show off that are going to make appearances um, in the Drake cinematic, or sorry, the Aegis cinematic, <laughs> that... Um, you know, people haven't really seen beyond concept art. So I think it'd be really, uh, really cool to kind of show how uh, these ships were created. Um, with that, though, I, I wanted to introduce a longtime friend of mine. Um, he's been gaming with me for 20 years. Uh, every project I've been involved in, whether it's content creation, uh, guilds, clans, orgs, um, Discord servers, whatever. He's been right there with me, helping create. Uh, and when it comes to these cinematics and Star Jump uh, specifically, he's there. I run ideas by him. I run concepts by him. Um, I use him as a sounding board on ideas. Um, and on the flip side, he again, he helps with you know, Discord moderation, building those servers, building websites with me, organizing information. He's really kind of a great you know, right-hand man to have along on the star jump thing. So um, I wanted to get him on here tonight just because I think he has a lot of excitement for these cinematics as well, even as even being sort of a part of them. He has a lot of those questions and stuff that a lot of the people that reached out to me have. How is this done? How are you approaching this? Where does this start from? So I thought it would be cool to bring him on to sort of be that voice uh, for all the people that have reached out to me and, and asked me those questions. And hopefully... You know, he'll be that voice and we can kind of get a good dialogue going. So, um, without further ado, I'd like to introduce Ender. Say uh, hello. Ender, Ender, you there? What's up? Yeah. So, it's good to finally get you on here. I know a lot of times with these cinematic uh, pieces that Star Jump is putting out, you know, I've been the face of those because I'm really building them. But oh, yeah. on the other side of the coin, Star Jump is a community as well. And there's a lot of community facing things that happen. Um, and you put a lot of that together. Um, and then in the early stages of a lot of these cinematics, you're there uh, helping me riff ideas, and I uh, will run things by you and, and get your opinion on a lot of that stuff. We've done guilds and RPGs together. We've done Arm Arma, Arma clans. We've done content creation on everything from role play to, um, you know, everything under the sun we've we've always Pretty been much, kind of yeah. doing that together and one mm -hmm. of the reasons you know i wanted to get you um you know on the channel with me is to start getting people introduced to you because we have our own plans for star jump uh where we want to do some really cool content that i don't think has ever been done before or it's been done but we're going to try to do it in a way that's a little bit unique we um, have our, our twist on it yeah that I'm pretty excited about it when we when we get it, you know, dropped out. Yeah, uh, it's gonna be it's gonna be good. I, I I'm pretty excited about it. Yeah, and I think we're so. Have a lot of fun making it. Yeah, and you know, we want to leverage a lot of the things um, that I'm doing with these cinematics. We want to leverage into our other content we want to create. Yep. I mean, Star Citizen is a passion game for us. We we have other passion games, and we've had passion games in the past that we've put everything in. You know, we had a big stint and. Warcraft with a big stint in Arma 3 um, where we did a lot of content uh, for that game and um, for Star Citizen we just love to play it we have passion we love talking about it so we thought let's try to do something with it and you know we don't know exactly what Star Jump will be or where it will go or what it will become uh, but we know we have a lot of cool ideas for things we'd like to get out to the community that we hope would be a little bit different maybe than what uh, you're used to so you know on that front stay tuned but it just was cool to get you on here so we could start, um, you know, putting a face and name to whenever I, I use the word we when it comes to Star Jump. Yeah. So, and a lot of other people that have run communities, especially before, 
whether it's a Discord server, a website, a podcast, uh, anything. Um, there's a lot of work that has to go on the back end, setting up those things, moderating yeah. those things. So uh, that's something you've always done really well. So, yeah, welcome. Um, I'm super happy. It, this is kind of the perfect form for me to join on it because I've yeah. been watching your life career uh, for so long and I've, I've got questions and yeah. it's a lot of the questions people are asking. So Yeah, yeah. And, and I thought that bringing you especially on the making the scene, even though I usually go all just kind of like behind the scenes and stuff, I thought it'd be good for you to be the voice sort of of people that usually are asking me questions. Cause you have a lot of those same questions too about yep. your techniques and how this happened and stuff. So obviously we're here tonight cause we have um, some, some new ships to reveal that are going to be in the cinematics um, or the age of cinematic. Two of the ships that we're going to reveal tonight have never really been seen outside of CIG's, you know, flat, concept art um yeah. and the occasional hollow model um that you know a lot of work's been put into so we're excited to show that off to you so uh where do, where should we start honestly i think we should start with let's show the ships yeah why don't um, we show the new reveal and, and let me preface these materials tests real quick so a lot of people have seen I've, I've put out these materials tests a lot of times it's two or three ships and it will say you know claimer and materials test what is the material test the material test is essentially i have a pipeline on my end and each ship has to run through that pipeline to get set up to go into the cinematic to actually be rent you know animated into the scenes and a lot of work goes into that sometimes it's full rebuilds of ships sometimes it's texture work it's always texture work lighting work um adding greebles and details to existing hollow models that aren't quite there rigging animation um, a lot, sometimes total custom texture, um, work. So th there's a lot that goes into that. So the materials test is when I've gotten the ship to like 95% and I say, all right, I'm going to put it on a turntable and see how it looks. And if it kind of passes muster, then it gets put into a finished folder. And then when I go to animate scenes that involve that ship, I'm able to pull that ship from that folder and just start animating it. So this actually brings a question up for me. Yeah. Um, one of these ships that we're about to show, and we'll talk more about it after, but one of these ships you've built quite a bit onto. A lot. Yeah, two of them um, actually have had a significant work, significant work. So when you built these, was this your imagining of it? Was it based off of stuff? It's, you know, each ship is honestly, it sounds pretty hokey, but every ship is like a journey. And you could probably talk to other people that, you know, take hollow models or, or any sort of 3D asset and, and do something with it. Uh, in the Star Citizen realm, they'd probably tell you the same thing is that each ship is just so different. Um, sometimes the ships that are already in game have better models to work with sometimes they don't sure. sometimes the hollow models are garbage sometimes they're not it just really depends um so yeah each ship is a little different these two ships in particular just happen to be ships that their hollow models are incomplete and or very very rudimentary or kit bashed as it were so right. a lot of work had to go into them uh previous materials test video i showed of the crucible was the same way the crucible had a ton of work that had to be done to it uh least of which i had to chop the model all up um and just to even work with it so right this is another one of those type of videos so yeah why don't we show it and then we'll show this materials test you get uh, you know you start jump fans we get to see a few new ships that are going to be in the cinematic again as, as i've said before the start the you know the aegis cinematic just like the drake cinematic before it is not going to be all ages ships there's going to be other manufacturers present in there because it makes it interesting and fun to watch for everybody. Obviously, Aegis is going to be the hero of the cinematic, but I like to pepper it with other manufacturer ships. And that's what we're going to be looking at today is we're going to be looking at a few ships from non uh, that are not from Aegis. So why don't we go ahead and roll that now, and then we'll talk about it. Let's do it. Here we go.
right. So that was it. <laughs> obviously, that, yeah, obviously we saw the Endeavor, saw the Polaris, yeah. saw the Kraken, and we saw a kind of a unique twist on the Carrick. Um, that's another thing before we kind of get into some questions, I'll say is that it's important to know that while I'm trying to capture the ship as it is in concept and sometimes in game, the goal is not to make it look like it looks in game. Sometimes I add more detail. Sometimes I do different paint jobs. Sometimes I, I riff completely and, and just add something that's unexpected. My, the main goal is to make it work for the cinematic, honestly. Yeah. So, um, yeah. So just, I like to put that caveat out there. Cause sometimes I'll get people, you know, message back saying, Hey, this ship is good. They're going to reconcept it. Mm-hmm. It's going to look different. Or these are the wrong engines that are going to be in it because that concept's so old or right. the ship is the ship supposed to be this color and not that, or it's supposed to be bigger or smaller. I'm taking liberties. I go off the metrics and specifications page on RSI's website, but I do take some liberties. So that being said, um, where do we want to start? We, should we start with um, one of the uh, easier ships to start with? Maybe the the, the uh, Carrick or the Kraken real quick? Yeah, actually, I was going to ask. Um, this Kraken looks a little different than what we had in the Drake cinematic. Yeah. So, so yeah, so why? the, the <laughs> So the Carrick. Um, so I, I call it the executive explorer and there's a little bit of a surprise that will be revealed when the cinematic is released on why it's this particular livery. It has something to do with, with what's going on. Um, however, I wanted to do something just kind of fun with the Carrick. The Carrick is, is a ship I own. Um, it was kind of the first big ship I got. It's, it's, that was my first experience in the verse. Yeah, it was. I hadn't I was even checking out the my arrow out. I yeah. was uh, I was exploring your your <laughs> Carrick. Yeah, and you know, concierge, um, um, uh, certain concierge members. I figure out, I forget how much money you have to spend pledging for the game, but when you get to a very high level, they give you a six hundred I executive edition that's black oh, and, or wow. like a gray and black and gold. And I was just thinking, I think the Carrick would be really cool as an executive, you know, yeah. special ship. So I just said that'd be fun because the character's currently in game. There's nothing unexpected about it. Um, people know, you know, know what they're seeing when they see it. And there's nothing wrong with that having the ship represented that way in the cinematic. But I thought it was just kind of a cool opportunity to do something a little different with it. Um, so that's what we did. It's not finished here. So it's still kind of a work in progress, but kind of shows you where I'm going with it. So it looks it looks like you're going to have a lot of fun with that. I yeah. know how much you love the ship. I mean, it's I do. Been- I love I love the character. And I think the Carrick has a lot of gameplay. Lot. I really think the Carrick has probably some of the most gameplay mm. you can have for a ship in the future. Uh, yeah. And so even yeah. now, in some in some ways. Yeah. So um, um, next ship, uh, Kraken. Th- there's something different about this uh, from from what we saw with Drake. What's what's the difference here? And and yeah. Good eye. What did you think on it? So one of the one of the thoughts that um, some of the Star Jump fans and fans of the Drake cinematic had brought up for the Drake cinematic, I think it was actually mentioned on DG 360s show, was that the ships looked awfully shiny, um, and they weren't wrong. The entire ship had um, kind of a gloss layer applied to it, so all of them felt like they rolled right off the factory line. Right. And I really wanted to fix that for the Aegis Cinematic. So the Kraken, uh, which is one of my favorite ships, probably uh, probably my favorite ship ultimately, I really wanted to do another pass on because it's going to make a pretty big appearance in the Aegis Cinematic. Um, if you've ever wondered who will win the, between the battle between an Idris and a Kraken, watch the Cinematic. You'll find out, maybe. Uh, but either way, <laughs> um, this Kraken's had a full texture redo on it. Um, it's a lot less shiny now, obviously. There's some shiny components, but it's got a finish, I think, that is aggressive and fits the ship a lot better. So It looks really good. Yeah. I, uh, I'm excited to see what you're doing with it, for yeah. sure. So that kind of leads me to a question I know you've had to have had. Mm-hmm. Um, <clears throat> so Drake Cinematic comes out. Um, we had a really, really good outpouring from the community. Which yeah, such great support and content creators out great. there that help support it and help get it out there because Star Jump did not have any 
any followers I mean, or subscribers yet. So I didn't expect what what we saw at yeah. all. You you came to me and you said, "Dude, we've we've got." I think we had like twenty five hundred views, and I was like, "What? Yeah, <laughs> you yeah. just released that." Yeah, so um, it was it was great. So, yeah, so big what did you thanks learn to the people that? that helped get it out there. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, what did so, you learn from the Drake Cinematic that you're um, pouring into the Aegis one? To plan better. The Drake Cinematic was something that was very unplanned. If you remember, it started off in our private Discord with our our in game org. It's mm-hmm. just I was gonna like, hey, I'm gonna build some ships. You know, and it wasn't really anything. And I started with the Kraken and um, working with um, some other artists out there who were able to help me with some conversions and learning my way around some things. Uh, there's a, I've thanked them before. There's a uh, someone out there in the community uh, named VMXEO, and he's really helped a ton with model conversions. Um, so, he really helped out on the Drake cinematic specifically um, with some of this stuff. And it was a, you know, it, the more and more I built up things, I was like, Oh, I could I've animate a scene and oh, now I've animated three scenes and Oh, this should be a cinematic. And then before I knew it, I was committed to something and I had artificially set a deadline of the <laughs> IAE. So then I was rushing to the deadline. So um, there was a lot of chaos in the beginning and a lot of stuff that wasn't planned. And this, those sacrifices show up in the cinematic in terms of things like shots. Some shots are a little weird. Sure. Some of the ships are kind of, uh, you know, shiny, um, just ill planning. So for the Aegis cinematic, I've taken a much different approach. Everything's much more planned out. I have an idea of what the story is already in my head. The music's already been chosen. Ships are being prepped along a pipeline and not ad hoc, you know, as I need them. So right. it's, yeah, planning. That's the biggest thing, honestly, that I'm doing this time. I did have one question about the Drake cinematic yeah. that I've seen multiple times, and I, I, I've seen some theories about the answer, but yeah. I'm curious what your answer is. What happened to the crate that the Cutlass Black took from the Holy I know, you know, it was supposed to carry it back to the Kraken, and I was going to have, as it's flying over the Kraken, it literally releases it, and the the crate just kind of floats down. And again, because I was rushing so much, I sort of forgot that the crate was supposed to be in there, so it's just the cutlass flying off. And, you know, that's... such a cool scene. Yeah, and, you know, I I work in film and television. That's that's something, you know, we, we, we call continuity. That's something we look for, you know, whether we're working on a feature film or a movie or even a commercial. It can be a client, you know, anything commercial based. Sure. We look for continuity in that and that's in that regard. And um yeah, it was kind of funny. It just was a total loss of continuity. I think I think we should include <laughs> that in all of our future projects. Yeah. One just one loss of step. continuity. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> That'll be our signature. <laughs> so I know what everybody's here for. Yeah. Um, after seeing the cinematic um, or the the test that you've yeah. done here, uh, tell us about the Polaris. Yeah, so the Polaris was um, it like the Endeavor was a ship that it's hollow model, which is the only thing kind of out there to mess with the hollow model on the actual RSI website. It was it's first off it's very old. I'm sure they've done a ton of work to it since. Sure. They, internally, they probably have a great model. Uh, but the hollow model is pretty rough. It lacks a lot of detail. There's gaping holes in it. Um, the geometry doesn't line up. It's too simple. Um, it, it just has major, major issues. Um, the concept art, or the hollow model obvi- also does not match the concept art of the ship. I mean, overall shape it does, but in certain like little greebles and details, you know, some sure. of the greebling being just these little techno details that aren't really anything, um, you know, like little clusters of, you know, parts and pieces on a ship that don't have any purpose. They're, you know, they call that greebling and stuff. So um, that it just lacked a lot of that stuff and it's a and it's a ship that's challenging because it doesn't have a lot of surface detail on it like details on it anyway and i think it's supposed to be like that i think it's supposed to be kind of sleek simple like a submarine it's essentially the sure. submarine of star citizen so to take that hollow model and do something with i had to do a lot of work a lot of chopping pieces out um lifting entire pieces of other ships 
and cramming on here just to build it out and fill it out a little bit more. Um, I one one hollow model I have had on the Polaris did not have a hanger, and one worse hollow model I had had a hanger. So I had to cut the hanger out of one and place it in the other. Um, it did not have a lifting ramp or a lifting surface on it like the real ship is going to have. So I had to, right. um, you know, build that, animate it. Um, the engines were in a sad state. The ship obviously didn't have any um, decaling on it whatsoever. And we don't even really know what the decaling on the Polaris is going to look like. Some of the concept right. art is is different. So the Polaris is a prime example of a ship that I took a lot of liberties with. But the goal was to stay true to the average of what the concept are and the average of, you know, what those ex- the expectations for the ship are. So, you know, the Polaris is supposed to go into the um, pipeline later this year, according to the roadmap, right. to be made ready to flight ready. And I'm sure it's going to change a lot. It's probably not going to look like what this one looks like. But this is my vision and, and my interpretation of the Polaris. So it's a ship I'm really excited about. Um, I now own it and I'm excited to see it. Um, so again, this is my take on it and hopefully other Polaris owners are excited to finally see it sort of not as concept art and hopefully can see it in the cinematic, make a really cool appearance. Cause it's, it's got a couple of scenes in the center in the age of cinematic where the Polaris is going to l- kind of lend a hand to the Aegis fleet, um, in, in a key battle. Awesome. So. Yeah. I cannot wait to see yeah. the finished product for this. So the other one that everybody's here for is the Endeavor. The Endeavor, um, yeah. yeah. And you've got a lot of stuff going on. So, <laughs> yeah. So the Endeavor is the biggest um, undertaking I've taken for any of the cinematics, whether it's Crusader one that's being worked on, the Aegis one, or last year's Drake. The the Endeavor it, it's a monster of a ship. There's no other way to kind of say it. You know, the the kind of the preview line I gave for this episode of making the scene was making making a monster, and it it's or building a monster, and it is essentially building a monster. Yeah. Um, the hollow model on the Endeavor is really just the Explorer shuttle, which is that large ship in front that they call the Explorer. Right. I think it's called the Explorer module or whatever. And then the long superstructure spine and then the core engine in the back. But the actual modules that go on it, um, of which there are many, um, that just doesn't, there's no hollow models out there for it. There's nothing to pull. So the Endeavor is a challenging ship and it's one of the ones, it's probably one of the reasons you don't see it out there in fan-made mock-ups and stuff because it requires an absolute ton of work to be made usable. Um so I was determined to make the Endeavor usable. I wanted it in the um, Drake cinematic. It actually had a scene very far off with very little detail, but I ripped it out because I didn't think it did the Endeavor justice. The Endeavor is a, is a ship that a lot of people are looking forward to, like a lot, and I, I wanted to kind of do something really cool with it. So f- for this material preview that we've shown off tonight, um, I'm referring to this as the Algarid class medical research vessel. Um, the thing about the Endeavor is it's going to have a lot of different versions of it because of the modules. Right. You put a biodome on it, a telescope array, particle collider, a hangar, a hospital module. I think the hospital module alone is going to be able to service, like, like heal up like 50 people. I don't even know how many it is, but it's, a, it's essentially a floating Nuts. hospital. Yeah. So I did in, in, Previously, CIG has sold certain builds of the ship. So they sold the Hope class, which was the hospital variant. It came mm-hmm. with the hospital module, I think a service module, and the hangar module, which could fit two Cutlass Reds. Um, they have the Discovery class, which was a different one, and another class, which was a different one, that were kind of pre-configured builds. Or you could pledge for the master set, which is all the modules, and you could interchange them. So... I thought along and hard about it, and I was like, you know what? I'm going to go a little bit unique with my with my builds of the Endeavor. And so I kind of thought it'd be cool to do a medical research uh, ship that had hospital components and hangar components for bringing patients and supplies to the hospital wing. But it also had this, um, you know, this biodome where, you know, 
medicinal plants could be grown and harvested and processed in the hospital labs uh, to sort of make new medicines and stuff. And I thought that was kind of a cool combination, two biodomes, the hospital module and the hab and the hangar module. So that's and kind of anybody that's in the hospital would have a place to go and walk, enjoy some outdoor leisurely, air. Yeah. So that's what you're seeing here. Um, however, um, and I'll show off a little bit of this here in just a moment. And the Aegis Cinematic is going to be showing two other endeavors um, that I'll show here in just a second. But um, the tricky thing about the endeavor was building components that don't exist. So I'll switch over here real quick to um, Cinema 4D, which is the program I use to build a lot of this stuff. Um, so, you know, what you're seeing now is just the base hollow model, superstructure, untextured, and everything. And the first thing I had to start doing was blocking out the components I needed. So I knew I needed a biodome. So I blocked that out. And I just, I, as you see, I just turned that on. This is just a rough example of the biodome using simple primitives in 3D, lining up where they should go. Um, did the HAB module here for the back. All this is sort of based off, um, you know, uh, CIG concept art, as I've said before. So I would sort of make these little cheat sheets of pieces I need. So for this hospital wing here, I knew I needed, um, this is the original um, hospital HAB module. So I took that and I knew I need to block out something similar. So that's sort of what that is here. The hangar module, for example, that's underneath, I use these images, which exist out there. So, you know, I started just blocking this out, very simple geometry. You'll see here, it's very squared off. It, there's no nuance, no texture to it did the hangar module, and I started saying, okay, that's a pretty cool build here. And then um, working with another 3D artist, uh, Nicholas, who will get a full credit in the actual age of cinematic, he really did a lot of work on the Endeavor parts and pieces for me. Um, so it'd be undoable without him. Um, he'll get a full credit in the cinematic for sure. He did a lot of great work. But he would take my blockouts. I would send him these blockouts that I did, and he would then take him for a week or two and start working on that geometry. And um, after he sends me back those those FBX files, I bring them in, attach them to the Endeavor, and just start building all the texture work, adding greebling. I took venting and, and other little parts and pieces and just kind of added to the Endeavor to fill it out. Um, but the goal here was to, to make the Endeavor fill you know, feel like it's it's been developed beyond just what we've seen in old concept imagery. Um, real quick here, I'll kind of lift out some of the hospital or some of these uh, module pieces here so you can kind of see how they fit um, in, the, in the sort of the grand scheme of things. But, um, you know, once he was able to give me these models, I was able to then take those and, and work with them, start building them out, texturing them out, lighting them out. It's just a lot of parts and pieces here. So one thing I'll do on this the bio module here, the biodome module, just so you can see, I want to turn off the glass and the, and the uh, framework for the glass. So you can see that there's fully formed um, gardens and, and medicinal plants, trees, even a little watering hole down here for the biodome. So um, we wanted to go all out for it because in the Aegis cinematic, one of the things we're doing, unlike the Drake cinematic, is we're going to do this all 4K. Uh, we're going to go for a really high level of detail um, and, and show these ships off in all their glory. So, again, it, we felt it was important to get these these gardens built for the Endeavor. So that's what you're seeing here. Now, another cool thing, though, is like I said before, is you're going to see other versions of the Endeavor in the final cinematic. Um, we're, I'm going to hold those off and not reveal those right away. But um, one of them will be the Particle Collider Endeavor, which I'm now showing you. Um, this is just the block out of the CG. Uh, the, these models are still being created as we, as we speak, actually. So you are going to see the Particle Collider um, Endeavor, and you're also going to see um, the Telescope Array Endeavor. So you can kind of see here how rough these block outs are. Um, obviously, the final... Um, Final version of this will have a fully articulated, articulated telescope array and particle collider. It's all going to work. And, um, you know, owners of the Endeavor, people that have pledged for that ship that probably know they're going to be waiting a long time for it, <laughs> they'll finally get to kind of see their ship do something um, and kind of see it in all its glory. So 
Um, I'm hoping that makes people happy. I mean, one of the main reasons I do these cinematics, not only is it enjoyable, but, you know, one of the weird things about Star Citizen is you pledge for these ships and you don't, sometimes you have to wait for them a while. They're in the pipeline. There's not, the tech isn't ready for them. And so some people have pledged for ships that they're waiting years for. And I love the idea of bringing those pledges and those concepts to life, you know? So those people right. waiting for those ships get a little taste of what it will be like. And you know what? I'm sure some of these help sell ships for CIG too. And that's not a bad thing either because I am a firm believer. You know, I'm a firm believer in the, um, the model CIG is going for self kind of funding, um, a project that would never be done without this type of funding. Right. Um, it's a very unique project, the scale and scope and its attention to detail. Um, I mean, this is, this is, you know, not an EA game. This is not a, uh, this is not a, a Ubisoft game, you know, for as many great games as they make, they would never do something like this on this level of detail. So, um, you know, I applaud the level of development and, and time and, and respect all that, you know, everything that's going into it. So if, if some of this excites people to go pledge for something, pledge for it, obviously I only do it if you can spend it, but it's, it's a massive project. Um, and I'm having a lot of fun with the cinematics. And again, it's all just about kind of igniting that, star you know spaceship fantasy so um you know i've had a lot of people reach out saying man i'm so you know glad you showed off the starliner you know i, I want to get one of those now and i'm like yeah awesome man i think it's a cool ship too and that's what this is all about so it's just making cool ships and allowing people to enjoy some of this stuff even though some of these things aren't fully released and then the ships that are flyable that i show off i like to show them off in ways that it's just cool and interesting. So if you remember from the Drake cinematic, you know, the, the Cutlass Black, you know, goes up I, to, you know, to the to the whole D or whatever it was and steals yep. a box with its gravity. It's, you know, it's grav tech, you know, um, sorry, tractor beams. And I just thought that was a cool little bit of spaceship fantasy that owners of the Cutlass Black are probably waiting on. And honestly, ever since me and you did the, um, did the Xenothread event and we were doing yep. the the throwing the boxes from <laughs> with, the, with our uh, tractor beam guns. I'm fully convinced that tractor beam gameplay is amazing. So um, is. yeah, but that's, you know, that's the endeavor and, you know, stay tuned. Uh, and, you know, in the final cinematic, we're going to show off those other variants. It's going to be really cool. One question about yep. the endeavor. You, you mentioned the particle uh, uh, beam. The particle um, collider, yeah, the yeah, particle the accelerator. Collider. I think they so, call I think they call it the particle accelerator module. Yeah, yeah, they yeah. got a name. So are you is this how Star Citizen gets into our universe? Is a black hole gonna open up out of this? You know, I the the um, you know uh, just yeah. suck everything in. <laughs> That's it should do that, yeah. <laughs> you know, one of the funny things I, I read about the particle collider um, element is I guess it's gonna be used to um, soup up and buff components and make them more powerful than they actually are and stuff. And yeah. and I heard that some people were going to like combine the particle collider maybe with the hangar module and use it for like race teams so they can soup up engine components and use that for their race ships. That's you know, pretty cool. oh, that was pretty cool. Maybe I'll riff off of that. That's something to think about um, once yeah. I start assembling all that. But yeah, it's a cool thing is CIG's outlined a lot of what these ships do. For example, the Crucible, I went back and watched a lot of the old videos. And I could kind of see what it's supposed to do. Yeah. But I can take liberties with that too and just have fun yeah. with this. And again, it's all about the fantasy and making these ships come off the flat concept art that's out there and making them come to life a little bit. That's the, that's ultimately the goal of this stuff. So, you know, you know, the ship I'm excited for, it was one of your previous videos. Yeah. Um, it's the hammerhead. Yes. I really yeah. love what you did with the paint scheme for that. And yeah. I know there's a little surprise that people will see later that yeah. I'm excited about. Yeah. Um, a lot of the ships are going to have a little surprise either in their action or what they're doing or how they interact with another ship. That'll be a lot of fun for people. The, the The idea is if you're a fan, especially if you're a fan of a particular Aegis ship, but if you're a fan of other ships too, if you see it in this, it's going to be a cool moment for you and in a moment where you can say, oh man, there's my ship. I, you know, I love that scene. You know, even well, if your ship's one of the ones getting blown up, I can't, I can't uh, that, reveal it. That brings up a, a question that I know you've had in the past and it's one that I've 
yeah. asked you previously as well. Um, and I think, I think it'd be good to ask uh, for this. Um, how do you get from point A to point Z? So we, we get these little morsels of num num that, that you drop yeah. in these materials test. Yeah. Um, but how do you go from point A of, all right, yeah, I think I'm going to do this. Yeah. To the story that you did for like the Drake cinematic and what you're doing for the Aegis cinematic. Yeah. Um, well, how do you get from A to Z? It honestly starts for me. The very first thing starts with what, what is this manufacturer about? And, you know, previously I thought, well, maybe I should just do a star citizen cinematic. I kept going back to the manufacturers though, because one thing about them was like, they all sort of have a thing. There is some, there's a lot of overlap and kind of cross pollination there, but they all have a little bit of a thing. So for example, one thing I really liked about Drake, well, they seem to kind of do a lot of things. They're, they're very much the blue collar manufacturer to me. So they, you know, they, their ships kind of cro- have a lot of overlap in a different, you know, right. places from salvage to pirate gameplay to mobile malicious stuff. Um, and it just, uh, there's a lot of variety there. So with the, the Drake cinematic, I really want to show these ships, all these different ships doing their different things, you know? So the, the Cutlass Black is stealing something. The Cutlass Red and the Cutlass Blue are, you know, apprehending somebody. Um, the uh, you know, Vultures salvaging, all that stuff. With Aegis, um, the first thing I think of with Aegis is, is military aggressiveness, you know, battle-hardened. So right. with Aegis, I really wanted to focus on maybe there's a large scale battle going on and we're seeing a lot of Aegis ships head to that battle and then eventually participate in that battle. Now, how much of the overall battle you will see um, is still being worked out as I work out the scenes, but I do know I want it, the, the concept of the Aegis Cinematic to center around a major battle and all these ships are heading there or somehow tangently involved in it. Um, so, for example, you, you might take a ship like the Crucible, which people obviously know is going to be in the Aegis Cinematic now, and you go, well, how does that fit into a wartime thing? You might see um, a couple Idrises and a Javelin and a fleet of other ships sitting at a rally point. And maybe the Crucible is going upside and repairing some of them, getting them outfitted and ready for the battle to come. So I'm looking for ways to kind of um, tie in some of the non-military ships into it. But yeah, the Age of Cinematic is going to focus on um, kind of a large battle scenario. So it really kind of comes down to the the manufacturer and what their kind of essence is. With the Crusader Cinematic, it's a little different. I think of Crusader as utilitarian, but also... Um, uh, they have kind of a, uh, um, it's sort of like a, a down and dirty sophistication to them. It's a little hard. So, but, and they have a lot of ships that do like tourism, data running, cargo gameplay. Right. So their cinematic is going to be very different than the Aegis cinematic. You know what I mean? It's going to focus on different things. So it kind of comes down to that. I can't wait to see my, uh, my beautiful star runner. Yeah. In the, yeah, the Star Runner will have a cool scene, and again, people are excited to see, you know, the A2, C2, M2, the Ares ships, and all that. So, There's definitely being worked on. Yeah. Well, I'm I'm a dumb amount of excited for yeah. uh, the Age I'm of Cinematic. E- I'm excited we- too. I'm excited too. They're fun to work <laughs> on. So. We've talked at length um, from from the start of your process yeah. uh, about various things that, that can be done and, and what ships you're working on. And, and uh, every time you come out with a materials test, it's just more and more exciting. Yeah. And we've, and I've now officially started animating the actual scenes themselves for the cinematic. Um, so it's, it's really kind of kicked into high gear now. So, um, you know, our goal is still um, to reveal this during Invictus. Um, through the help of some others that, you know, will be announced later. Um, some, some people out there are going to help us kind of get this in front of as many eyes as possible. We're, we're really hoping to do something that 
you know, not only the star jump community, but um, just the star citizen community can get excited about. So, which I'd, I'd love to just take a second to mention the star citizen community. Oh yeah. They've been very um, supportive of the project. So, and not just the project uh, from the moment you helped me get into this game, you were like, dude, you got to get this. And, um, you got me set up and, and we started playing, uh, right away. One of the first things that I said to you, uh, after our first day of playing was dude, the community is a dumb amount of helpful. Yeah. I went into yeah. the verse and literally was like, Hey guys, it's my first time. How do I, how do I, how do I, Yeah. and there were salutes from everyone in the server and they were like, all right, so this is a good place to get you started. And yeah. like and it's- people are so helpful and i've been able to give that back funny that i was actually going to mention that at the beginning that's the big thing that i think you're kind of becoming well known in the verse for is is reaching out to people you see struggling in the channel and helping them especially new people i know you just recently sent a bunch of in-game credits to someone (laughs) to help them get started so again it's it's this cinematic what you do in game and just all that that's the cool thing about the star citizen community is everyone's out there kind of um helping each other out helping yeah. support each other's projects and endeavors and stuff so it's really cool and it it helps build the community into yeah. you know like i'm giving back because of what was given to me yeah. the help and assistance that everybody offers is yeah. just amazing yeah. and i love it so um, yeah, I mean, so without this video obviously getting too long, we, we you'll, you'll definitely be seeing a lot more Vendor and, and myself and, and, you know, more stuff we release. Um, you know, we're not going to be a traditional content channel where you're getting the news and stuff. There's plenty of people that do that way better than we ever could. But well, yeah. we, we hope to deliver cool, you know, content that's maybe a little different, maybe a little bit more role play focused. We'll go into more of that later as we kind of figure out what some of that is. But Right now, As we our, get closer. Yeah, right now our focus is on these cinematics and delivering a really cool Aegis cinematic that everyone can get excited for. Um, so, But if you're in-game and you see an Ender underscore SJ or a Grim underscore SJ, which stands Star Jump, um, you know, message us, say hello. Uh, we love to chat with people. And, um, you know, again, we will feel free to, to just reach out and, um, you know, if you're we watching this, on, yeah. If you're watching this on our YouTube channel, you know, obviously please subscribe. Uh, but you know, we're trying to build this. We kind of started from nothing. We're trying to build it. So send it to your friends who maybe don't know about it, so they can get eyes on it. We really appreciate all that support. So should we mention the Discord yet? Is that ready? Or well, should we I think wait? I think what we could say is that you know we're we're getting a, a, a Discord community put together as we speak so i think very soon here probably in the short term uh we'll have that link out there you can join it talk with us talk spaceships talk star citizen um me and me and ender just recently started mining in game which has been um (laughs) yeah we put it this way we melted our rocks because we realized we're terrible at mining in the rock and we're doing only prospector mining now and have actually having a lot of fun with it and seeing the latest video star citizen put out about new mining stuff yeah. is really cool but regardless um you'll see us in game we we do try to get in it um you know at least as time or two a week possible. and um you know look for us and reach out but um that'll be kind of it for this episode again uh thanks ender for coming on board and and jump you know lending your voice and kind of looking at this from some from some of our fans perspectives and asking some of those questions i know you approached me with some of those questions previously and i said you know what i'm getting asked by that by star jump fans so it'd be cool if you kind of come on and, and be the voice so uh appreciate it but um again everyone like subscribe the youtube channel keep supporting the project we really appreciate it and until next time we'll see you see you then thanks guys